Okay, so now I'm in uh, the MSE. Uh, if you're not a Linux guy, um, don't fret too much. I'm not a Linux guy by any means at all. I'm mostly Linux illiterate. But you need to know enough to move around uh, the folder structures and to run a couple of commands. Um, so uh, there's two commands you definitely need to know how to run. The first one uh, is to be able to start, stop the service, check the service. So the location of that one um, is at, so if you do a CD to change directory, uh, we use forward slashes in Linux, so forward slash etc, forward slash init, period d, init.d is the directory. ls is like doing a dir. The file that we're looking for is this msed, or msed. So if you actually want to run it, um, you actually have to preference uh, your command with a, a period, forward slash, and the file name, space, and then this is the service, so we can tell it to start the service with a msed start. We could tell it to stop the service with an msed stop. Or we can check the status with an msed status. I can type it right here. So I'll do the status just because I don't want to start and stop yet. We're going to have to restart it uh, when we go through the next thing here. But it'll reach out, uh, let you know MSC platform's up, so that's a good sign. And then you'll get some information about it. Services that are running. So definitely know how to do a stop and a start of their service, because there's no guarantee that the service has been started for you. Um, or if something is just weird, you want to try restarting the service, know how to stop and start the service. So that's the first one to know. The next one to know is running the setup script. So that one is in forward slash opt forward slash msc forward slash setup. That's the folder. The file we're looking to run is called setup-sh. This is what you would set your run on the initial setup, and this is also what you run to change values. This is mainly um, network settings, NTP settings, um, some service settings. Uh, the pass, you know, in here you can set the password used for WCS to communicate. So we'll go through all the settings you can use, and I'll point out the ones that are kind of important that you should know for the lab. So to run it, we need to do the dot forward slash setup.sh. And this is all the Linux you need to know. So if you're a Linux noob, um, don't worry. You only need to know these things, and you should be fine. So let's go ahead and run it. So the MSC should probably be pre-configured for you. I know it's going to be... Uh, at a blank slate of no configuration. So you should expect to see what is already configured here. So anything you want to leave uh, as is, you know, skip is usually the default selection. So just hit enter to skip past it and leave it alone. So we shouldn't really ever need to change the host name. And the host names really doesn't mean anything. Uh, we shouldn't need to worry about domain, but you could configure a domain suffix. IP address, okay, so here we see yeah, it's using the wrong default gateway of .254. So yes, let's go ahead and change this. Why? Uh, we don't want to change the IP. The IP is correct, so we'll skip it. Uh, we don't want to change the subnet mass, so we'll leave that. Yeah, we do want to change this, so let's go ahead and type 1010.210.1. All right, and then going on. There's a second Ethernet interface. We don't want to configure that, so skip. We don't need to configure DNS. We'll skip that. Time zone, if they actually ask you to configure a specific time zone, you can do that here. Most of the time, uh, we don't really care about time zones, so we'll skip that. Uh, we can configure a, a future restart day and time. We're just going to skip that. Uh, technically, you could configure a remote syslog server um, here. Um, 
You can also configure logging within the GUI of the MSC, so uh, I think this is maybe for underlying service type stuff. Um, we'll skip that. Host access control settings, you probably want to leave these alone because you might accidentally lock yourself out of here, so I'll skip it. NTP uh, could be important, so I don't know if I would necessarily run the setup script just to configure NTP if I wasn't asked to, but definitely if I am already running, I will configure an NTP server, so let's go ahead and hit yes. All right, so do I want to enable it? Yes, I want to enable it. And what server am I going to use? I'll go ahead and use WCS. Do I want to enable another NTP? Uh, we'll leave it at none, so I just want one. Do I want to configure NTP authentication? Only if I'm prompted to, generally no. All right, we'll skip the audit rules. We'll skip the login banner. Uh, don't tweak any sort of system console settings. Don't tweak SSH root settings. Don't tweak single user mode. A lot of this stuff is management access into the CLI here. Don't accidentally lock yourself out. Configure a root password. Uh, we already have a valid root password. We don't want to change it unless I guess you're asked to. Uh, now we have our password. Uh, uh, restrictions, you know, like the password length and uh, strong passwords. You might need to change this if they actually asked you to explicitly configure a WCS communication password uh, that's not complex. You would actually have to go in here and change it. So let's choose yes, because right now strong password is enabled. And when they say strong passwords, they, they kind of mean it. Um, you need it to have at least eight characters. Two of them have to be uppercase. Two of them have to be lowercase, two of them have to be numbers, and two of them have to be special characters. So it's actually pretty complex. So we'll, we'll go ahead and choose yes, and we'll turn that off. So we'll leave the number of days the password may be used. Um, we'll leave the acceptable password length to eight, but if we needed to shorten it, go ahead and do that. Uh, login delay, we'll leave that. So the strong password checking, we'll go ahead and set that to no, so we can create a simple password. Do not change the grub password. Okay, WCS communication password. This is definitely one that you should know. Um, hopefully, you know, they give you the communication password you're supposed to use. Uh, the default password uh, for WCS communication is username admin, password admin, all lowercase on both sides. Um, so you can always try that if they don't actually give you the username password. Uh, but barring that, if it's just not working, uh, you might have to go and reset it. So, yes, let's go ahead and configure a WCS username. Um, so, enter an admin username. Um, I'll call mine WCS. And yes, let's configure a password. I'm going to make mine IP expert123. Normally, if I wouldn't have uh, disabled the strong password checking, it wouldn't have accepted that password. And that's the last thing. So now we get a summary of what all is going to change. Is the above information correct? Yes. Okay. Now it's going to make the changes, and it's actually going to have to stop and restart the MSC service. So uh, this is going to take a little bit of time for this to actually occur. So in the real lab, at this point, you would kind of walk away, or not walk away, but move away and, and work on something else. Um, don't sit there and stare at it for, to complete because it can take, you know, five, maybe ten minutes, just depending on how fast the, the MSC is going. So we'll let that finish. Um, and then once after this, I should be able to start uh, connecting to it off network, you know, pinging to it off network. The funny thing is, if, if you would have run into this in the lab, um, you know, and, and you already knew the password and everything. In our setting, you know, WCS would have been able to connect up to it just fine, so you would have been able to add it to, to WCS, but it wouldn't be able to talk to any of the controllers because the controllers are off subnet, so it would look like it's working, but then all of a sudden you wouldn't be getting any location information, um, you know, and there wouldn't be any communication to your controllers, so 
definitely know how to do this. Um, but those are the only two things you really need to worry about in the CLI. Starting restopping the service and running this initial setup script.